We're going to cover the four key elements behind core strength training, four throws, and we're going to start right now. What's up, everybody? It's Dan Miller from throwsuniversity.com. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to be a beast thrower, like, subscribe, smash the notification bell so we can help you hit some monster PRs. So one of the classic terms that throws coaches like to throw around, even coaches of all walks of life, they always love to say, hey, I think you just have a weak core. I think your core is just a little bit weak. I think we need to strengthen your core. But in all reality, what does that even mean, right? How do we even know if someone has a weak core? How can you identify what a weak core would be? And that one key factor that a lot of throwers actually end up struggling with is they might start to get, if they're a right-handed thrower, they might start to get some ab pain here and there on that left side. And that's not even necessarily a, an identification of a weak core, but also possibly just chronic overuse because that left side ab is responsible for quite a bit of deceleration and that can lead to a lot of stress. So we've got to make sure that that's strong enough to handle that repetitive movement. We also know that having a strong core or trunk, and that's what I would like to think about with everything is more a trunk perspective where we're talking about our gut, we're talking about our back and how it co-contracts, our erectors will co-contract with our abs to try and hold positions better. So if we come out of the back of the circle as a spinner and we ground in the middle, instead of leaning and falling forward, we need to have a little bit more of an upright posture, similar to Krauser or Kovacs. And so that we can hold that position. Now that stronger core, that stronger trunk leads to better technical execution. And then when we have better technical execution, that also leads to better energy transfer. If we can think about a big term, advanced force absorption, okay, or advanced dynamic force absorption. What ends up happening is that when we can control those positions, we can absorb that energy when we're grounding in the middle and we can transfer that energy really, really well to a better position where we're gonna have a lot stronger of a finish at the end of our throw. So we can think about being able to hit that shot really strongly or being able to throw the jab extremely well, rapidly, and being able to control that greater technical position so that we don't foul. We can actually transfer that energy more effectively into the implement. And that's the ultimate goal here is that we've got to have a core that is able to take all the energy that we're developing from our legs, from our upper body, and transfer that all into our hand, which then goes into the implement, right? That's the overarching theme here. So we've got to go into those four key elements behind core strength for throwing. So that first key factor is going to be rotational isolation. So if we get a new thrower that comes in and we need to improve their trunk stability, their trunk control, one of those first things that we might do is get movements that are gonna be rotationally isolation based. Okay, so what does that mean? Something simple, think about lying on your back and just doing windshield wipers with your feet. That's an isolation exercise of your trunk that is rotational. Think about doing fowlers. If you're sitting on your butt and you're just rotating back and forth, throwing a medicine ball from your butt position into a wall. That's an isolated rotational movement. So these movements, are a little bit easier to execute, but they're training the athlete how to be a little bit more rotational, how to absorb that rotational energy, how to then reuse that rotational energy so that it can actually lead to better performance. So you've got to understand that when we start to develop athletes or when we start to build during various periods of the year, we have to look at it from that perspective. Are we gonna focus on that rotational isolation exercise or what's that next key element? And that next key element would be linear isolation. So what would this mean, right? And, and do we even need that if we're talking about throwing really well, if we wanna throw really, really far, do we need to do linear work? Yes, we do, we have to. We have to train from a full global perspective and linear isolation work is also very easy for athletes to do, for athletes to execute, for young athletes to execute, for athletes that are coming back from a long period of, of, of having time off from that training to get them back into shape, they can do linear isolation work. So this might be you know, doing a V up or doing a hanging knee raise, something that is actually focused on just that isolation perspective and it's linear, simple work. And what this ends up doing with young athletes is it triggers some growth in their trunk, it, it triggers some proprioception, it triggers them to be more coordinated so that they can handle these positions and they can feel things that they otherwise may not have felt. And over time, they learn how to implement this newfound strength, this newfound feeling into their throw. 
And that's where we start to get a little bit more advanced with our core strength for throwers. When we get a little bit more advanced, that's when we've gotta be aware of the impact that it's gonna have on their throws later and later and later, because that can be a trigger for how we're gonna peak our throwers. And that takes us into that linear global work, okay? So this is gonna be really, really explosive work where we're in a closed chain position. We're gonna be utilizing our entire body while really trying to focus on rapid contractions or rapid actions from our trunk. So think about an overhead medicine ball slam. A javelin thrower probably does this quite frequently, right? Or if we're thinking about a sledgehammer slam or even just doing a walrus where you're, where you're in a plank position and you're walking your hands with your feet on furniture sliders. These are examples of that linear global work. There's minimal rotation involved, but it's a rapid application of core and trunk strength that we also have to understand how to utilize that deceleration after we hit the tire if we're doing that overhead work or how to absorb that medicine ball bouncing back up if we're doing the overhead medicine ball slams. But that is linear global work. So we have to then look at what type of work does the athlete specifically need and then how can we apply this to their training to increase the throw? And does it help them increase the throw? Does it lead to better transfer at the front of the circle? Does it lead to better transfer on the runway? And when we can understand what the linear global work is going to do, that takes us into the next more advanced aspect and that's gonna be rotational global work. Now we're taking these two simple keys here, these two simple elements, and we're making them more advanced. And so now when we're doing rotational global work, this might be a standing side medicine ball. This might be a side sledgehammer. Could be a shuffle into a side medicine ball throw. Anything that's gonna be a lot more advanced, even a, a step in half turn with a band, that's gonna be rotational global work. So now we're getting more and more precise. So if we slowly implement these, and as we get closer and closer to peaking, we might find that an athlete does really well with the linear global work and it leads to great throws. We might find that the rotational global work actually leads to better throws, better feeling, better execution on the finish, or better positions out of the back. So it's important to understand these four elements and recognize how each athlete might adapt differently and how they might struggle to recover with a rotational global exercise. And they'd prefer to do better with linear global work, even if they're a spinner or a discus thrower. Okay, so these are all more advanced concepts. And if you need help with your periodization and understanding these key elements behind core strength for throwing, click on the link down below. You can head over to throwsuniversity.com and you can pick up one of our pre-built programs that's gonna help you dominate drop some monster bombs, hit huge PR so that you can become a better overall thrower. If you want more content around throws-based training, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.